Hey guys, it is uh, really close to the camera. But uh, yeah, I've got this huge Sony right up my nose. Anyway, this is about the third time I've tried to record this uh, mini cast, like I call it, because it's really not, it's kind of off the schedule. But I'm on a roll with this editing stuff and it's, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I'm just kind of throwing things out there like I, I see them. And I tend to like just talk and I have to like whittle down like 15 minutes of just stuff I'm blurting out to you know a small little thing that you can kind of ingest so my main reason for bringing this up was that I wanted to talk about an old topic that we've talked about but I think that the biggest part of flying um, for me personally was um, was working things in with air traffic control I mean I was always kind of a apprehensive about you know um, getting on the radio and and Casey used to always get on to me because in the beginning I would blurt out things and rattle them off really quickly trying to just, you know, get it out and get off the radio. But uh, they're there, everybody talks about they're there to help and and you need to try to get out there and just do it. If, you, if you're not around a controlled airfield, you know, go to one. Go to an area that's got a control tower and you're talking to them. Take a cross country that, that you can use flight following, get into the system and get familiar with talking back and forth with them. So um, I recorded this like twice and what I wanted to do was kind of, we did a, an episode back on episode uh, 28 or 29, something like that, where it was flight following. And Casey and I did like a thing back and forth where I simulated, uh, you know, cross country where I called ATC and, or called approach. And, um, you went through the whole spiel so but i kind of wanted to quickly blurt out some of the things again if, if we didn't uh because I don't, I don't think it's any problem to to review um and just slam it down your throat until you get it kind of thing but uh bottom line don't be afraid to get out there and, and kind of do it it always helps to be uh to be prepared when you're going to make that call and basically what we're going to do is we're going to outline the four w's the four w's is who you're calling who you are where you are and what you want. I mean, I'm gonna fly from Melbourne and I'm gonna fly over to, where is, let's see. I don't know, let's stay Melbourne to Daytona. That sounds good. You know, it's about a 50 or 60 mile, something like that. Um, so I'm gonna call Orlando Approach, 132.65. You kind of just hang out for a minute, kind of listen for people. To, I mean, the worst thing you can do is, is try to interrupt somebody, and, and it's just that kind of etiquette that we're talking about. Um, and there's tons, a lot of times we just hear that horrible noise when somebody's tried to transmit when someone else is talking. So you don't want to do that. So just kind of listen for a little bit. Then you're going to make your call. And you're going to, you're going to, before you, before you make it, make sure you have your tail number, make sure you have your location and your altitude that you're currently at. So you'll say, uh, first you want to just introduce yourself. Orlando Approach, Cessna 183 Sierra Papa, with request. Sometimes you can, I've said over in the past, you can say Cessna 183 Sierra Papa, over. Orlando Approach, Piper 374 for Quebec, with request. Wait a minute, wait for them to respond. Sometimes they just don't respond back. And remember that flight following is provided on a workload permitting basis. So they may never, they might not have time for you. And at that point, then you're going to, need to have uh, an, an alternative. Who is the VFR calling Orlando with a request? Uh, Piper 3744 Quebec. 3744 Quebec, Orlando, Fox 0335. I'll be right back with you. You know, uh, so at that point you're going to say, you're going to make your call, hang out, and you'll come back. You'll say, uh, Orlando approach Cessna 183 Sierra Papa, go ahead. Now, I'm sorry it's going to get kind of out here because my car is loud. 3744 Quebec Radar Contact 10 Northwest to Melbourne. Now 10 minutes 3016 at Orlando. Stay request. Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to get flight following from. Uh, I'm just about 10 miles to the northwest of uh, Melbourne. Would like flight following to X-ray 60. That's Wilson. X-ray 60. Thank you. Advise any altitude changes. What's your on-course heading? On-course heading is 314. Four Quebec. Thank you. Is that Cherokee you're flying? Yes, sir. All right. Once he, once he's established radar contact with you, uh, then he's going to go ahead and say, um, three Sierra Papa, go ahead and fly heading, you know, three six zero 
uh, maintain at or below, you know, whatever he wants. It could be at or below uh, 3,500, and uh, and he also might say advise uh, advised prior to any altitude changes. So you know, for that you may if you can't maintain because you're maybe flying and you've got a, some clouds in front of you. If you can't maintain your altitude, you just con con contact back to Orlando Approach, Cessna 183 Sierra Papa, unable to maintain altitude due to uh, uh, due to weather. Say so he comes back during the flight, you just you got to listen. You know, the nice thing is kind of like a situational awareness because uh, he'll come around. And he might say, "Three uh, Sierra Papa, you have traffic to your 12 o'clock report traffic in sight." You come back, and he, all you need to say is, if you don't have it in sight, you just say, I'm "Looking for traffic, Three Sierra Papa." You know, or you may immediately see that and say, traffic in sight, three Sierra Papa. So, uh, you know, always just kind of listen for your tail number and, you know, don't space out. Just because you've got uh, traffic advisories now, don't, it doesn't mean that you can just kind of hang out and forget what you're doing. You've got to kind of be aware of what's going on. Um, another cool thing that they've done for me uh, and they did for this last podcast that I did was Roy initially requested... I'm not sure why he picked 5,000, but our route was going to take us over the Class Bravo airspace from where we were doing a westerly heading. So we were heading from Arthur Dunn, X-Ray 21, over to that small little airport, uh, the Grass Strip, 02 Foxtrot Alpha. So it was a private little air, you know, the aircraft salvage yard. Well, that our path was going to take us right through. So, I mean, obviously, you can go. You don't have to do flight following. You can go all the way around it. You know, kind of stay under and, and kind of uh, try to avoid all that airspace. But honestly, when I'm renting a plane, it's cost me money per hour. You know, that vectoring around that airspace might take another half hour, and that's money for me. So I'm going to do what I can to get in there and just transition straight through their airspace. So in this case, he requests Royce requests 5,000. Well, the guy comes back and he says, "Hey, I'm unable to." Um, provide or give you 5,000 due to departing and arriving flight. So here, take a listen to Roy's call, his initial call. It's going to be a little different uh, because Roy does things a little differently, but I'll post this article and this article from AOPA, it's about VFR traffic advisory, VFR flight following. And I think it answers a lot of questions that you may have. And uh, it never hurts to go through these simulations on your own. Just just go through something on your own, record it, you know, record it and go through it like I did with, with Casey and I. So here, I'll play you Roy's transmission here and you'll kind of hear what the controller says and, uh, and him go through the whole thing. So um, here goes. Tower 6521 Lima, line of first day request. Yes, sir, 2521 Lima has just departed Arthur Dunn. We're actually heading to a small airfield west of Orlando, um, about 28 miles uh, west of the VOR. Uh, Place for Osborne. We'd like to cross the slot via 5,000 feet at some point. September 2521 Lima reset transponder 120350. Down computer bus and type aircraft. Okay, 035021 Lima is a 172 and requesting 5,000. Number 2521 Lima's radar contact, two miles northwest of the Arthur Airport, unable 5,000 feet for traffic arriving in and out of Orlando International. And what's the identifier for the airport you're landing at? 02 Fox Foxtrot Alpha. Number 2521 Lima can go either out of below 2,000 feet on a uh, 280 heading or I can take over Tom for Line International at uh, 4,000 feet. That'll be the highest I get. Let's see, we'll take, um, we'll take 4,000 over Orlando International. Number 2521 Lima, we'll maintain DFR at uh, 3,500 for now. Clear to Orlando Bravo Air Space Flight at 240 back to the Tom for Line International. Okay, 21 Lima's up to 3,500, 240 on the heading. All right, guys, well, I hope this has been somewhat educational. And um, if I have any more tips, I'll pass them on and as best as I can and without getting the facts wrong, uh, because we're all human. We make those kind of errors every now and then. But if I can't answer it, um, you know, then I always ask my CFI. But send me an email, greg at studentpilotjournal.com. 
Um, if I, like I said, if I can't answer it, I'll send it on to Casey. You can check us out on Facebook. That's Facebook. www.facebook.com forward slash SBJ podcast. Also Twitter. By uh, uh, I am at SPJ Greg. Uh, what else we got? <clears throat> We've got the blog is at blog.studentpilotjournal.com. Soon to be going back to www.studentpilotjournal.com. I'm looking at moving over to another host uh, hosting company uh, so I can get back onto my main domain name. So anyway, guys, have a good week. <laughs>